We're going out to look for speakers after Daria had a miserable experience blowing out both the tweeters on the very nice Bowers and Wilkins ones that she had. We have no idea what caused it, but at this point it'll cost a hundred bucks to get them fixed, so we're going to see if we can get lucky at the thrift store. It is a beautiful cloudy day in Seattle today. It's a wonderful day to go thrifting. You don't get worn out by the sun. We're going to the Dearborn Goodwill in Seattle today because it has the best selection of audio hardware. Since we're looking for speakers, our best luck is going to be there. But also, they have a whole bunch of miscellaneous little bags, and uh, that's going to be relevant for a project we're thinking of putting together soon. Oh, that's right. They haven't opened yet. Where are those are the no, they right? just opened. Yeah. They just opened. But still, look at that empty ass parking lot. You ever seen it that empty? Yeah, a couple times. We've never been here this early, I think. At least it's not glitter sale. Glitter sale? Yeah, glitter sale is the big sale they have like every quarter, I want to say, where it's mostly closed, but like super deep discounts. They open up the back room, which they never used to do on the regular, but now is like a furniture area. The very first interesting thing we have here is this little tiny realistic amplifier. I mean, it's nothing special, but I'm always really tickled by these things. Oh. There's also a very unusual sort of toy piano. I've never seen this design before. They are usually very piano shaped. I was really surprised to find one that was this sort of abstract looking. Wasn't much else of note going on in the collector's apartment, so moving on. Though not particularly useful, I did come across these, a couple of dumb terminals. This is not the sort of thing I usually expect to find in Goodwill, and I think that the local used computer store, RePC, actually dropped off a bunch of their stuff that they couldn't sell at Goodwill, basically to get rid of it. There were two of them, and I don't have any use for them, but maybe some kid will pick it up for $10 or whatever and, you know, have a good time nerding out. The last couple times I've been in this store, this machine has been there. I didn't know what it was other than it was an optometry device. I did my research and I found out this is a Fieldmaster 200. It's for plotting out someone's visual field to see where they've lost vision. So this here is a recorder. It's a thermal printer that saves an image of your visual field. And this whole machine has a bunch of little fiber optic lines that go all different places. There's little pinpricks of light that appear in your peripheral vision, and this records each one of them. You just press the button every time you see a light appear, and this machine saves which locations you saw the light at. Useless to me, but super cool. Later in the 90s and 2000s, it wasn't unusual to find dual-deck VHS machines, but rarely over and under like this. They were usually side-by-side, -side in my experience, or they were specifically designed for capturing DVDs onto VHS. But this one appears to just be two VHS decks sandwiched together. I mean, you can see here where it's, it, it almost looks like they literally took two VHS decks and sandwiched them together. Like they didn't even really redesign the mold. It must have been a really early dual deck machine. It's a shame this was missing the cover for the tape head because this was a nice looking machine at some point in its life. Unfortunately, it's missing all of its controls, knobs, switches, everything. Real shame. There was also this beautiful beta deck. I mean, I think it's beta. Either way, what an absolute dreadnought. What a monster. Look at the size of this beast. What'd you find? A Suzuki. Whoa. Yeah. I've you never seen one of these before. Wow, that's a very quirky looking device. Yeah. How much do they want for it? 20 bucks? 40. 40 bucks. Um, hmm. Well, it's worth plugging at least. Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. Unfortunately, we tried multiple power supplies, different polarities, and I could not get anything to power this thing up. Someone must have plugged the wrong power supply into it at some point in the past, or maybe it just broke of its own accord. I mean, Suzuki is not a very well-known manufacturer of keyboards, probably for a good reason. It sucks, though, because it being such a strange-looking device, I really wish I'd been able to see what it sounded like. There was this very aesthetically pleasing old radio, and I was interested in it until I realized it was AM only, and I just can't get behind that. There's nothing interesting on AM radio, and I can't collect radios I can't listen to. I should note that this says dual speaker, not stereo, dual speaker. 
It's only one audio channel, it just has two speakers. I saw this nice looking alarm clock which turned out to have a telephone in it. I was excited for a moment, but I reminded myself that I don't make phone calls and that as much as I like phones, I actually hate them. Then I saw this radio, and at first I wasn't that excited, but the more I looked at it, the more I liked it. Then I discovered the best feature, a time set jog wheel. That got me instantly interested. So I plugged it in, and fortunately it did work. And I'm gonna go ahead and jog it. Look at that. The easiest radio to set in history. Why don't they all work like this? That silly push button crap. But then I realized there's external speaker connectors. And then I realized there's no built-in speaker at all. So I had to go hunting to find the right speakers. And I did in fact find one. Only one. I searched and searched and searched, but I could only find one. I could not find the second speaker. And without the second speaker, this is worthless. It was so sad having to put this back. I tried it out and it seemed to work perfectly. I had no complaints about it, except that it didn't have the second speaker. But I'm not gonna, but I'm not in the business of collecting junk. I would probably never be able to find the other speaker for this. Without that, I would just have an ornament that didn't even look good for display purposes. So sadly, I had to put it back. We're pulling up to the Ballard Goodwill. This, for years, was one of the most exciting Goodwills in the whole region. This used to be where you'd find all the coolest stuff. Like, Ballard always had a great stock on you know, clothes and a great stock on all kinds of gadgets and AV gear. I think I must have picked up a half dozen audio receivers here. Yeah. Not to mention, you know, televisions. And it was a wondrous place, but uh, times have changed. Never been a big fan of MCS stuff. No, no, it just looks really good. I don't know that it's necessarily any, any good. Got some speakers. <laughs> we found these fissures, which will probably do to replace Daria's dead ones. Got yeah. these gigantic 12 inch or larger woofer cones on them. They were in fact 15 inches. And for once, everything looks intact. Nah. Usually these things are trashed, but these ones look good. Normally I'd go and sit in one of the testies and hem and ha, but they're five bucks. And if they don't work, uh, I can just smash my face into your camera. I found this cabinet, which was interesting because it appeared to have a CRT protector on the back. That suggests that this was once a console television, and it was a pretty nice looking one, so I was interested to see what it looked like inside. But unfortunately, once I got inside, although the radio was still there, and it wasn't a very nice looking one, the tube appeared to have been completely removed. So, really a shame somebody turned this from something interesting into something totally boring. There's also a number of these mid-60s or early 70s console radios. Uh, I can tell it's from that era because each one has an 8-track deck in addition to the very low quality record player uh, and a really cheesy looking radio. These things do show up pretty often and they're extremely boring, but I was surprised there were like three or four of them at this same thrift store. Now if you want a piano, the Ballard Goodwill usually has three or four, but this one was quite unusual. Not only a player piano as it turned out, but one in absolutely gorgeous condition. Despite needing tuning as usual, it didn't even sound that bad. Hey, sorry, I'm trying to play with one hand while holding a camera, okay? Anyway, here's a peek at the insides. Oh! It's pneumatic. Well, yeah. Yeah, they always are, but wow. And then that over there must run the pneumatic system that yeah. actually drives the, uh... Oh, I see. So this, this spins the take-up reel, and the take-up reel pulls through there, which spins this which drives that is my guess. That's interesting, it's not spinning 
Oh, there must be a clutch in place down there. I think there is. There's the bellows. Okay. Yeah. And there's bellows along the side here, too. Oh, there's so many bellows. Oh. Okay, that is a solenoid. A pneumatic operated solenoid that operates the uh, dampers. And then those are. Realize. They feel like plastic, so this thing's newer than it looks, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that's, that's Bakelite, so this is at least from the 40s. It can damp the bass and treble sides separately. That's, that's not even a normal piano function. Wow. What a remarkable piece of equipment. Next, we got some Dick's Burgers and listen to Jeff Rosa's talk for a bit. I kind of always forget how disappointing the cheeseburgers are. Mm hmm Just got a french fry. Good boy. You won't throw him the whole bag. Oh, he's going for more. Next up was the Shoreline Goodwill, which is a real mix. Never know what to expect here. Here we have another under cabinet radio from General Electric. I want to collect them, but I just don't have the room. There was this real funky AT&T Freedom phone. I don't think it was part of any sort of PBX system. I think it was just a really funky home phone. And then some AdTram VoIP phones that look absolutely horrible. Here's something special. This is a Panasonic portable tape recorder, very similar to one my mother had. Uh, she had a much higher end version, but this is the sort of thing you'd use if you were a journalist recording an interview and definitely a really high quality player, the whole line, I believe. So I went ahead and bought it. I saw this in a returns cart and I picked it up and by the time I got the cable into the wall, I knew that I wanted nothing to do with it, but I just had to know what its deal was. So very dirty radio dobs and a really, really basic radio. I mean, by the time I had it sitting on the shelf, I realized like, oh, the radio's just kind of tacked on. This is not a very nice piece of gear. And then once I started twiddling the knobs for the clock, I knew this thing was a piece of junk. It's got so much style, but once you look into it even the tiniest bit, you realize it's terrible. I don't know why Sony even made this thing. It doesn't look good. It doesn't match anyone's aesthetic. It's not well made. What an embarrassment. So while the other Goodwill had a couple of those awful old phonograph 8-track players from the 70s, this one had a couple of nice console radios from, I don't know, 30s or 40s. This one didn't look to be in the best condition as far as the front panel, but it looked like it was, you know, together. And from the back, I can see all the components are there. It doesn't look like it's been beat up too much, so I didn't want to plug it in, you know, possibly blow something up, but it looked like it might actually work. The second one had a little weirder style to it, a little more inconsistent, yeah. and it was actually broken. So you can see there the tuning dial wasn't really working. I could feel this wasn't connected to anything. Uh, the switch there felt really rubbery, and the one on the right actually just spins and spins and mm -hmm. is clearly broken off of its control post. This one also looks pretty together from the back. Dusty, but probably not something you couldn't get working. I always check the toy sections, hoping I'll find a nice X-Wing. This is not a nice X-Wing. This is a Funko Pop X-Wing. Okay, onward to the next one, the Desiree Industries. These are weird. I've never been to this one before. The first thing we found was oh, the nice. worst SNES knockoff controller ever made, followed by the best toy ever made. Oh no. Got a job to do. <laughs> I make this look easy. What is this a license from? I don't know. DreamWorks Animation. Wow. Dino Trucks. Dino Trucks. Wow. I'm a really big fan of this bootleg SNES controller. It's a Retron branded. Ooh. Here, bro. Here's your controller. After sorting through the controllers for a bit, I came across this, a flight oh. stick that I keep seeing cropping up in local thrift stores and VPC. I've always been curious about it, so I decided to get it. Next up was the CD section, and while there was a lot of software in here, there was also a lot of LDS propaganda and gospel music and whatnot. And then, oh, the no, best hun. disc for the coolest kids. Songs to keep cool kids on the safe side. Oh no, hon, it's a Stranger Danger disc. This entire CD is songs about Stranger Danger. When's this from, 93? 2006? Oh my god. 
After that, I turned the camera off because I had so many CDs to sort through. That was the Desiree, and I actually have never been to that one before. I think in the seven years I've been in Seattle, I've never been into that store. And Desiree is run by Mormons and is always an incredibly sterile place to be in. So you're always sort of uncomfortable. Damn! Oh. Sorry you missed that. That, holy crap. That was some sort of desert motorcycle. That thing was completely skeletonized. I don't even know how to Google for that. Yeah. Fuck the video. I'm just going to go home and look at pictures of motorcycles. Okay. The Desiree Thrift Store had really decently priced CDs. Their CDs were all a dollar, which was really reasonable considering the other thrift stores lately have been like three fifty and 4 bucks sometimes, and even more. So I actually did find a bunch of software. Uh, Daria found a whole bunch of quarter-inch reel-to-reel tapes. Uh, didn't one of those have the Beatles on it? Yeah, like, uh, they're definitely someone's home recordings. Uh, so they have, uh, some Beatles stuff on there. I saw some Zeppelin, uh, so, some other stuff. I'm really interested to see if there's... There's a giant chair. Oh, yeah, that's right, there is. There's just a huge-ass yeah. chair out here. Anyway, it'll be interesting to listen to those. And he here I am running into the problem of buying these pre-record... Or these tapes that have stuff already recorded on them. Is, do I want to keep the stuff recorded on them? Or do I want to erase it and use the tapes for my own purposes? Both are legitimate things I can do. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it, it all depends on what's in there. If it's just like a boring ass... If it's just somebody spooled off what was on a record that they had or a CD, God forbid, then that's one thing. If they recorded it off like the radio or TV or something, that's a different story. So you gotta listen to it and see yeah. what, what's on there. So we'll have a listening party tonight, uh, yeah. assuming we get everything that I've gotten today working. All right, so we also got, um, we found a, a laser disc with a bunch of old CG demos on it. So that's gonna be vaporwave as fuck. We're gonna have to get a laser disc player again, which I'm really upset about, but at least you have the AV set up for it now. We actually have a place to put a laser disc player. Uh, we'll have to get a laser disc player again, maybe, maybe get one of those combo ones. It's got the little DVD player in the middle. You know, I've been thinking about that. Uh, it might be time. That would be super hot. I would be I would be down with that. I'd be I'd be down I don't with... actually need that though, because uh, the PS2 has Sure, absolutely, but I love the idea of playing DVDs on the little drawer that comes out from the middle of the big drawer. So yeah, that was a great fucking haul, and uh, despite the fact it took us five hours to get up here, I think in the future I'm going to make more of a beeline for this place, because that was fucking stellar. Every other time we've uh, been to a Deseret, uh, like, just, we went out of a whim, and we found something that kind of changed our lives. Like, that's how we got our good table saw, etc. God, you're right. Yeah, that's right. We went, uh, I never put the video for this up because it was a long time ago and I hadn't developed my ability to, to edit video and, and whatnot. And I was also really depressed at the time. We went into a Desiree, um, what was that, February? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was like, it was like six, seven months ago. Oh wait, there it is. Look at this thing. Zoom in on that bastard. Holy crap, that bike is cool. It's so ramshackle. It's like a... That is a Mad Max as hell bike. Okay, can we talk about their color, their color coordinated backpack? I mean, yeah. Like that's got both the orange, that's the same as their helmet, and the same as the bike, and they've got that uh, teal that is on the other side of the color circle. That's so good, though. I've never seen one built like that. That's what I want. I want to die on that motorcycle. <laughs> and don't worry, I'm sure it can facilitate that. Anyway, so we went into this Desiree thrift store back in like February and we came, came across this table saw and I've been looking for a table saw so I could finish putting together my oh. basic wood shop for quite a while. And um, we walk in there and like normally you find a table saw in a thrift store, it's either an off-brand or it's a tabletop craftsman from 1973 or it's like a plastic chassis one and they want like 69 bucks for it. This was a cast iron top craftsman table saw that we googled and found out was legendary at any price uh it was complete everything was there it worked and they wanted what 40 bucks for it yes yeah, something, something stupid like that yeah it was it was like 40 bucks bought it took it home the only thing it needed was to have the rust removed from the top and daria hit it with some steel wool and rust remover and made the quick work of it so yeah desiree that's one of the last bastions i think i think that the eBay vultures don't go there. It's the impression that I get. <laughs> I have this notion that they don't go to there or to any of the weird out of the way thrift stores. And so those are the ones you're gonna find the wild stuff at. The problem is those are also the ones that are mostly clothes and knickknacks. So you either get very, very lucky or you get nothing at all. Look at this shithole. 
This is a fucking terrible McDonald's. This thing is so ugly. This looks like the Space Jam website. There's a Salvation Army. We just passed a sign for it. It must be brand Careful. new. I've never seen it before. And it's just this gigantic Salvation Army tucked into this random strip mall I've never seen. So we're gonna check this out. We got that good cheesy wolf art. Mm -hmm. Probably racist. That's really good. DLP projectors. Oof. Oh well. Oh, I love little tiny alarm clocks. Ah. Is that a data back? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, man. Extremely 80s. I don't think it works either. Shame. Under a nondescript table, I found this crusty box, which turned out to contain a really beautiful reel to reel recorder. Wow. It's not actually a good one. Like, it looks really styling and it's portable. But in reality, I don't think it's a very high quality piece of equipment. Part of what I don't like about it is it looks to me like you have to physically remove the tape from the cap stand in order to rewind it, which is really low quality. That's not great. Also, instead of using quarter inch jacks for input and output, it just uses RCAs, which have never been good. It is super styling though. I wish I liked it. In this random box of junk, I found one of the ugliest joysticks I've ever seen. I actually made an attempt for a while to untangle it from the horrifying snarl of cables it was in, but after a bit I took a second look at it and thought, no, this thing's terrible, and just left it there on the floor. Alright, so that place was kind of weird, and I didn't want to film inside because they seemed really aggressive about taking backpacks away, and that usually means they're going to be assholes about cameras. So I got what appears to be yet another incredible machine knockoff, so I'm anticipating that's going to be god awful. And then uh, I got a whole bunch of other software. There's a Magic School Bus title in here, Lemmings game, a terrible old adventure game. This one I'm super excited about, the racing triple pack. Three racing games you've never fucking heard of. One of these is from Biebersoft? Smart Saver. This is apparently Broder Bun's low-end economy title label. This is garbage. So I'm very excited about that. And then finally, another expert software title. I shouldn't even get these, they're low-hanging fruit. This store was so strange that they just gave me my stuff in this very nice, wonderful fabric bag. Apparently they're just using whatever garbage they can find. That was, yeah, not a bad haul, certainly. I'm uh, pretty pleased with it. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was, the atmosphere in that store was very odd. Sally Ann's are always terrible in that uh, regard as far as atmosphere, as far as selection of things. Yeah, it's always You never like, find anything good there. Their electronic selection was bad like, things. Their electronic selection was real fucky, like all they had were five of desk CD changers. Yeah, pretty much. Just that and like a couple bad TVs and like a DLP projection television. Alright, so we finished up there, got ourselves some gas and a coke, and we're gonna hit our last thrift store for the day, the Salvation Army on Aurora Boulevard. Oh this one. Yeah. I think, isn't this the one where I talked them into a markdown on a stereo? Pretty basic ass general electric clock, the ugliest under cabinet stereo I've seen in my life, and then the worst telephone. Absolutely the worst. The ugliest. The most hideous piece of faux executive garbage I think I've ever seen. And that was it. That was our trip. That was my Saturday. I was out from 9 in the morning to 5 o'clock. I found some good things. I uh, like a lot of the software that I got, I'm pretty excited about. Um, there's a couple things I didn't show in this video. Uh, I found a hand plane, I found a nice brush for cleaning my desk off, and I had a pretty good time just going through the stores and everything, despite being mad as hell at the eBay vultures. Most importantly though, we did find a pair of speakers for super, super cheap, which makes us feel a lot better about having to buy them just to hold us over until Daria's good ones can get repaired. Rejoice, my girlfriend does not have to go without music. So it's time to go home, find a place to put all this stuff, and hopefully we'll see it again in future videos.